Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us for the Medical Board of California Panel A meeting, pursuant to the provisions of Governor Gavin Newsom's Order N29-20, dated March 17, 2020. This meeting is being conducted via WebEx. Um, Dr. Lewis, you may now go ahead and start the meeting. Okay. Good morning, everybody, panel members and uh, members of the public. Welcome to Panel A meeting of the Medical Board of California. I am Dr. Ron Lewis, who is chair of Panel A. The first order of business will be to call the roll to establish a quorum. Would you please call the roll? Dr. Hawkins? Here. Ms. Lubiano? Here. Mr. Watkins? Yeah. Dr. Yip? Here. Dr. Lewis? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. I'd like the uh, ALJ King to just introduce herself and then before we start the proceedings. Uh, good morning. My name is Tiffany King and I am the ALJ with the Office of Administrative Hearings who is assigned to preside over these two um, oral arguments today. Welcome ALJ King, Judge King. Thank uh, you. We've seen you before and um, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the order of business today will be to have an open session in which we'll hear two oral arguments. After that has been completed, we'll then go into closed section, session where people will be asked to exit the room except for panel members and particular <laughs> certain board staff. So that will take place after the, our last or, oral argument. And then we'll go into closed session and we expect to conclude these proceedings around noon. So with that in mind, uh, let's turn this over to uh, Judge King to begin the oral argument as listed in your agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Leeds, if we can, please go on the record. Okay, and, and we are on the record. The first, uh, the first case we're calling is Stephen Patrick Crickle. I hope I'm pronouncing that last name correctly. Is Dr. Crickle and the attorneys on this matter present? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm here. Are you, are you Dr. Crickle? Good yes. morning, sir. Um, and you're represented today by Mr. Fleer? Yes. Okay. And I'm I'm here as well. My name is Hamsa M. Murthy. I'm Deputy Attorney General. Good morning, Ms. Murthy. Good morning. So it looks like we might still be waiting for Mr. Fleer. I saw his name. Okay. Mr. Fleer, make sure your, your microphone is unmuted. Mr. Flair, we can hear you now. <laughs> I'm not a technological wizard. Uh, it took a while. Uh, okay, you figured it out. Okay, so we're all we're all present here. Are we ready to proceed then? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. We are on the record before the Medical Board of California in the matter of the accusation against Stephen Patrick Crickle. This is Medical Board case number 800-2019. Dash 05 1948. OAH's case number is 2020 09 0022.1. Today is May 12, 2021. The time is approximately 9 a.m. The hearing is being conducted by video conference through the WebEx application. This is the date, time, and place set for oral argument in the notice of hearing for oral argument. My name is Tiffany King. I am the administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings who is assigned to preside over this matter. 
Prior to going on the record this morning, the board members did identify themselves and a quorum was established. At this time, I'd please like to take the appearance of counsel beginning with the deputy attorney general. Good morning, your honor. My name is Hamsa M. Murthy, deputy attorney general. Thank you. Mr. Fleer. Uh, yes, uh, John Fleer representing Dr. Crickle. Thank you. Uh, the board in this matter has issued an order of non adoption of a proposed decision by an administrative law judge and has decided to determine the matter itself. The board has invited particular discussion on whether the proposed order should be modified. The following uh, process and time limitations shall apply. Respondent will begin and will have 15 minutes to make an opening argument. The deputy attorney general will then be given 15 minutes to respond. After that, respondent will have five minutes for a closing argument, and the deputy attorney general will also be afforded five minutes for closing argument. I remind everyone that the argument shall be based only on the existing record and shall not exceed the scope of the record of duly admitted evidence. No new evidence will be heard or received. The panel members may ask questions of the parties to clarify their arguments, but may not ask any questions that would elicit new evidence. Uh, I, myself, or any panel member may ask a party to support the party's oral argument on a matter with a specific citation to the record. At the end of oral arguments by counsel, I will uh, offer the respondent an opportunity to address the panel regarding the penalty. If he chooses to do so, I will place him under oath first. After oral argument, the board will go into closed session to deliberate. The party shall not receive a decision today, but will receive it in the mail sometime in the future. Again, remember that all arguments must be based on the existing record and please be aware that the board have already had the benefit of reading your briefs. Are there any questions uh, before we begin? No, your honor. No. Okay, let's sit. let me get my stopwatch ready here and um, we're ready to go. So Mr. Fleer, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, Judge King and the uh, panel. Uh, I um, I am um, not aware of what the reason is for the non-adoption, but I am hopeful that it is because the uh, proposed decision was uh, harsh and overly um, just not proportionate to the single incident involving Dr. Crickle uh, and, and a DUI. I have uh, been doing this kind of work for a fairly large number of years and uh, the, um, the circumstances of a DUI are, are obviously uh, different for different people. Uh, for, for Dr. Crickle, it was a, um, and, and I, and again, I hope that everybody has reviewed the, the, the transcript of, uh, of the hearing, but for, for Dr. Crickle, it was a, uh, a rare, uh, completely rare event, one-off event. And, uh, he has been, um, completely, com uh, anticipating uh, taking care of him of himself in terms of of his uh, um, dealing with this situation. When I think about it, I, I realize that you know there's a difference between trying to put forth um, an excuse and an explanation. And I think in this case, uh, Dr. Crickle has uh, a, a very good explanation for why this um, event in 2019 happened. Um, I, I actually can't even imagine going through the kinds of uh, traumatic experiences that he has had to endure uh, over the last few years. He uh, 
was an emergency physician for a long time. That's one of the exhibits is the CV of, of Dr. Crickle and it, it uh, shows that he has, has been in practice since uh, uh, 1996, employed uh, uh, at, at various hospitals. Um, might even have that wrong. I think it's been longer, but um, his his licensure was uh, 1988. Um, he um, uh, got stressed out by the uh, by the emergency room practice, and he took himself out of practice. And it wasn't like somebody told him that he had to do so. He just um, realized that this was uh, overwhelming to him. Uh, at the same time, he's going through marital difficulties, which were testified about during the uh, course of the uh, of the hearing. And then his uh, home in Santa Rosa burned down. Um, so he's had a he's had a difficult time with um, uh, with feeling uh, depressed and 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 he's sought psychotherapy. He's removed himself from practice, and he's gone to um, regular AA uh, since this incident of this one DUI. Uh, he still participates in that. Um, he has done everything that anybody could ever say you should do uh, to uh, to be responsible to the to the potential um, uh, patients that you might work with again. He has no inclination whatsoever to to work in emergency medicine, but he 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 he, he uh, he's qualified to do family practice. And um, he may do so again in the future. The um, proposed decision is just this kind of cookie cutter. Um, let's let's just give every every possible um, uh, probation condition, uh, regardless of whether it's necessary or not. The board, as you know, I'm not trying to lecture you all, but the, um, the, the, the job you have is to uh, protect the public. Uh, Dr. Crickle has, and, and he's shown that. Um, there is no reason to make him do um, other kinds of probation conditions. Uh, he's not currently practicing. Um, and he uh, has, has, has done all of the things that somebody would want him to do already. Uh, it, it, it actually makes no sense anymore to just, you know, keep it on. Uh, this is a one off. This is uh, one single uh, incident and um, uh, you know it, it is I assume it is appropriate for a public reprimand um, I'm not saying that it's uh, it's insignificant but it is uh, something that he's dealt with that he's continued to deal with uh, I know the rules of this uh, of this hearing uh, do not allow uh, new information and so forth. Uh, but if you have read the transcript of the uh, proceedings, uh, you will you will see uh, that he has uh, continued to deal with this uh, this situation in a way that is admirable. It's not. Uh, it's not because somebody told me he had to. It's he has uh, uh, 
gone forward and, and, and tried to uh, proceed. And I don't know what the future might bring, but he should not be deprived of his license simply because of a single event that really was related to things that almost anybody could uh, understand would be uh, uh, traumatic. He suffers from a post-traumatic distress disorder as a result of uh, what happened with his house. Uh, there is a an exhibit to the uh, transcript by, uh, which is a report from Martin Williams, PhD, which um, uh, was an examination that he did uh, back in uh, November 2020. And um, it's very complete. I, I hope that again, the panel has, has reviewed all of this. The, uh, the two diagnoses are post-traumatic stress disorder and major depressive disorder in partial remission. Um, partial remission is because he has also sought psychotherapy and he, he has uh, been, been treated uh, with uh, psychiatric medication as well. And he's uh, on his way to uh, hopefully uh, getting back to where he could practice again. But to layer on to that some more some more uh, shame and conditions uh, just doesn't seem appropriate. Um, he's doing everything that he needs to do. And um, again, I hope that people look at the, uh, or have already read the deposit, or not the deposition, but the report of Dr. Williams. The proposed decision was was interesting because the judge dismissed it, acted as though, or, or stated as though it was it was not very meaningful. Um, it wasn't helpful. Um, again, I don't mean to lecture the panel, but the, uh, the, the job of an administrative law judge is to make a decision as to whether there is clear and convincing evidence of a uh, of a need for discipline, and uh, the evidence in this case was Dr. Crickle testifying, Dr. Williams testifying. Uh, the board had the, an incident of of a DUI. That's it. Um, there is no counter to what Dr. Williams said after his evaluation. Uh, his CV is also one of the exhibits. And you'll see that he's done uh, lots of, of, of evaluations for many governmental agencies uh, to determine fitness for duty. And he sees no reason that Dr. Crickle can't uh, do uh, his work in the future, and that he's on the right path, um, and that he did. And, and here's the most important thing, and that he has no alcohol dependence disease. Uh, the people use the word alcoholism as uh, as kind of a catch-all. Um, anybody who overuses it, I guess, might be. Uh, seen as an alcoholic, but there's a there's a difference. Um, whether somebody is uh, really meeting the criteria and 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 uh, using alcohol to cope day by day, uh, doing uh, has a tolerance has uh, there there are many many aspects to it. I'm not going to try to pretend that I'm a a, a psychologist to to describe those because Dr. Williams sets them out in his report. Um, Dr. Crickle does not have an alcohol 
dependency disease. He is not an alcoholic. There's there's really no uh, there's actually no such criteria in the DSM uh, five, uh, uh, but he is somebody who uh, made a a a grievous error uh, back in 2019, and he acknowledges it. Um, he uh, is taking all the pro proper steps to not have that. Uh, reoccur and Dr. Williams finds him fit for duty, um, that he's on the right right course. And uh, uh, of course, you see that Dr. Crickle is here present. Um, I, I, I know the parameters, <laughs> Judge King, uh, that we have to, uh, uh, he can't give you uh, new information, but um, he can tell you what, uh, he can answer questions. He's he's here to do that. He's he's always been very 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 forthcoming. Um, has has uh, not tried to evade or hide from from any of this uh, uh, responsibility for his one bad act. I I guess I should add that of course nobody was nobody was harmed except him. Um, Mr. Fleer, you have one minute remaining. Thank you. Um, and 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 I, I guess that's a good case for me for me to end up with Judge King. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, he he he's a he's a, a good man who is doing everything he should do. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Fleer. Uh, Ms. Murphy. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, good morning to the panel um, and thank you for the opportunity to present today. Uh, on April 20, 2021, I submitted on behalf of the AG's office a written argument on non adoption in this case. Pursuant to the board's order of non adoption of proposed decision, which appears at PDF page four of the 318 page record on non adoption, there is a very narrow issue before the before the panel today. And that is the question of whether the level of discipline ordered in the proposed decision is sufficient to protect the public. So I want to bring us back to what is actually properly before the panel. Uh, today, and it's it's our understanding that in this particular case, the board is concerned about the respondents being away from active medical practice since 2014 and would like to consider the possibility that re respondents skills and general fitness to be to practice be assessed. That's what we are considering today. So let me just make two points, which are uh, briefed in my papers, but I, I just wanna highlight them uh, now, and then I will make a brief third additional point. First, the ALJ's proposed decision in this DUI conviction case properly addresses, we believe, respondents DUI and significant history of alcohol abuse. Thus, the five-year probationary term, and indeed all the probation terms that were proposed by the ALJ, do the essential work of providing for public protection in light of respondent's history of alcohol abuse should respondent return to medical practice. The ALJ's proposed five-year probationary term, along with all of the conditions which the ALJ delineates in her proposed decision, conditions which, my, which I might add, include the substance abusing licensee conditions, uh, should not be disturbed. They must be part of the board's decision after non-adoption in this case. Second, and moving to the issue that is before the board today, 
Um, during the course of the hearing, a respondent testified that he stopped practicing medicine after a particularly traumatic case in the emergency department in July of 2014. And he explained at the hearing that he went on long-term disability in December of 2014. But he also testified that he plans to return to practicing medicine, medicine and seeks to do so in family medicine. The AG's office understands that the board is concerned about the length of respondents' time away from medical practice, which will this July be seven years. And we support the board's inclination that respondent first have his skills assessed through a clinical competence assessment program. And given the factual circumstances of this case, it may indeed be most productive to structure the probationary term as a condition precedent to respondents return to practice. In any event, we believe that adding a clinical competency assessment is reasonable in this case, is well supported by the facts and evidence, and advances public protection. Third, I would also like to note that the ALJ's proposed decision in this case finds cause for discipline under Business and Professions Code 2234, along with sections 2236A and 2239A. This is at page 10 and 11 of the proposed decision, and it would be PDF pages 14 to 15 of the record on non-adoption. Um, I, I point to this because the disciplinary guidelines for clinical competence assessment, which appear at page 24 of the 12th edition of the board's disciplinary guidelines, uh, provide for clinical competence assessment in the event of discipline under section 2234. Finally, I would request that if the board should, after deliberation, decide in its decision after non-adoption to include a clinical competence assessment program, that the board include its factual findings supporting the need for such a program here. Um, in, in a few things, just in response to, uh, to Mr. Fleer's statement, first, I would like to say that, that Dr. Williams' opinions uh, were found to be unsupported by the evidence and unpersuasive and therefore accorded little weight. There is no reason to disturb that particular conclusion. Moreover, the request of respondent and his counsel for a public reprimand were duly considered and rejected at the administrative hearing on account of the simple fact that such discipline would not adequately protect the public in this case. This is a case in which respondent has conceded to having a significant problem with alcohol, that is an alcohol substance abuse issue, uh, specifically to be found at the non-adopt records at page 176 to 117 and 285 to 286. Uh, this is a case in which the substance abusing licensee terms and all of the other terms that the ALJ are more than supported by the evidence and separate and apart from that, a clinical competence assessment program, if the board should add that particular requirement to the discipline in this case, that too is supported by the evidence. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Murphy. Mr. Flair, would you like to make a closing or respond sure. to that? Yeah. Um, your house burns down, you get divorced from your wife, or you're going through a divorce and um, and you've lost your career. I think uh, a lot of people would drink. Uh, that's what happened with Dr. Trickle. Um, he got a wake up call uh, and he's taking care of 
So dealing with uh, with that, uh, why punish him now? Uh, he is a, a super competent physician. Uh, he uh, has, uh, there's no danger to the public. He's not even practicing now. And he uh, would uh, uh, certainly agree to uh, a competency exam um, or, uh, uh, you know, another clinical exam. I, I, I still don't understand how uh, the exam done by Dr. Williams is disregarded, um, but there's uh, those aren't the problems. The, the problems are to put somebody on probation for five years uh, and, and then require this, you know, I mean, honestly, it's draconian. Uh, there's uh, kind of like call in every day and do a, a random drug test. He's been doing those kinds of things uh, uh, for a while. Uh, and again, he's here to to answer questions from from the panel um, regarding those activities or his uh, his uh, rehabilitation mitigation, however you want to phrase it. Uh, but it 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 doesn't make sense to uh, to put somebody like this. A responsible physician, a, a, a good physician, on on uh, who has never harmed a patient, uh, he's harmed himself uh, on one day in 2019. Uh, to to put him on some kind of prolonged uh, disciplinary action uh, just simply makes no sense. Thank you. Ms. Murphy, would you like to further respond? Yes, um, thank you, Your Honor. So the issue before the tribunal today is not why Dr. Crickle may have developed a problem with alcohol or whether it was reasonable for him to do so under the circumstances he was dealing with. The issue before the tribunal today is whether or not the proposed discipline in the ALJ's decision adequately protects the public. It goes a long way in doing so, but an additional term would reasonably protect the public further, and, and that is the clinical competency assessment. Uh, we hear from, from Mr. Fleer sort of two sides of the coin. He's not even practicing now, and therefore we are apparently to infer that uh, all that's warranted is a, a PLR. But we know that uh, is, is, is not uh, a, an argument that holds any water. First and foremost, respondent will continue to have a medical license. He simply needs to pay the fee to uh, be off retirement status, so to speak, and he could practice medicine any day. The point is that this is a respondent who needs to be supervised in the practice of medicine, given his history of alcohol abuse, given the DUI. Uh, and we cannot think of this as penalty, but rather what is the board's responsibility insofar as its fundamental mandate is to advance public protection. Uh, we have no record of respondent being able to to balance medical practice with sobriety. Uh, respondent abruptly and traumatically left the active practice of medicine in July of 2014 and has not since practiced. So this is a, a, a quintessential case in which um, supervision, all of the terms for the substance abusing licensee, uh, clinical competence, all of these things are required uh, to make sure that the public is safe um, if the respondent chooses to return to practice. Um, we have no reason to believe that respondent is not a, a, a competent physician who has many more years of service, but, um, but we submit that respondents uh, return to the practice of medicine uh, must be done so with particular safeguards and conditions in place. And 
if the board would like to add a clinical competence assessment program, we believe that is within the board's rightful discretion and well supported by the evidence and in particular respondents own testimony at trial. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Fleer, would you like Dr. Crickle to address the board? I mean, to address the panel? Well, let's, let's ask him. That's okay. Do you want to do you want to say anything? Actually, I do feel compelled to say something. Okay, so, Dr. Crickle, before you make your statement, I'm going to ask that you please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly state under penalty of perjury that the evidence you will give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes. Thank you. Sir, the floor is yours. I don't know how much time I have. They actually don't prescribe that, but we're, let's say five minutes. Yeah, I think I can do it in a couple minutes and. This might be a lot in a short amount of time, but I want to make this as linear as I can starting from the beginning, which is a decision to become a physician as a sophomore in high school based on a mentor I had um, who was a Catholic priest of the order of. Servites, also called servants of Mary. My life has been directed since that time to serving others. I not too long ago met a priest who had less Catholic education than I do. I went on to the most renowned Catholic uh, university in the nation where service was also uh, the major threats to helping others. Um, um, in, instead of pursuing one's own well-being. I've always tried to be of service to others, sometimes to my own detriment. Um, emergency medicine uh, became more difficult over time, especially with the shift work and difficulty sleeping. Um, um, somehow I think my alcohol use sounds more than it was based on my statement of self-medication and Admitting that I was an alcoholic, um, my marriage um, was on the rocks for 15 years before I stopped working. I had um, a relationship that was over time difficult to admit that was emotionally and verbally um, abusive. I've over time lost my self-esteem and lost my balance in life. One could call that burnout. Uh, I had increasing anxiety, depression, difficulty sleeping the last month before stopping working. I was getting given 2 months of shifts in 4 weeks. Which was untenable. My coworker would had the same thing happen to him and. Complained, but there was no way to get out of it since we were understaffed. I emailed him saying. Sorry, I can't help you. We're going to die. I had no idea that I was declining in that time. Um, to that point, I had no uh, plan to exit work. Um, I did have a coworker who was on the physician well-being committee take me to the side. Apart from the uh, physician well-being committee, uh, noticing that I was not my usual self, I lost my uh, sense of humor and was. Not my usual self for comment to me directly was we want our old Steve back. Uh, this had nothing to do with patient care. Um, I've never had an issue with patient care in the end. My whole life and source of self esteem was patient care. Um, I wasn't getting self esteem from my marriage. I did have self esteem for my kids, but my life was totally out of balance. I burned out. I was recommended that I see a therapist, which I did. I wound up seeing somebody who hearing my story said that I should stop working. I resisted for a couple of weeks until she finally basically demanded that I go um, to my medical provider instead of an outside therapist where they were concerned in two other people, including a psychiatrist who leaned across said, you need to stop working today. I resisted that. Um, I had my last day of work turned out to be 
remarkable in that I had one of those career cases where a young man was partially decapitated. We had a trauma center that um, he typically would go to. He came to me, a non-trauma center, because the paramedics could not gain access to his airway. It was that moment that I realized that I can't do this anymore. I literally felt like I was going to soil myself. Um, I was supposed to do a night shift after that. And in the office of my therapist, I basically broke down and said, I can't do this anymore. Um, One minute remaining, Dr. Crickle. Pardon? One minute remaining. Um, six months later, I got a pile of mail from the hospital that had certificates from state and federal legislators calling me a hero for that case, saving that young man's life. I um, got his, his airway was not easy, but I did it quickly. Um, and that is when I decided that I couldn't go on doing that. I since then have um, focused on taking care of myself. Um, I, I'm running out of time, but I was scheduled to take the family medicine board a month after the fire where we lost everything. I wasn't going to take it, but it, the night before I decided I paid for it, I might as well take it. Uh, on 20 different scores, I scored, uh, it scored like the SATs, a perfect 800 on two of the segments. Um, um, just in ending, I, my biggest regret, obviously, I screwed up. I mean, I'm trying to decide what the worst day of my life was losing will be my losing my license or uh, losing everything in a fire. I also regret that I may not be able to go back and help others and serve others, something that I have devoted my life to. Um, you know, I'm totally despondent over the worst mistake I've ever made, made in my life. Um, you know, what happens there happens there. Um, but I regret that I may not be able to go on and serve others as I have done my whole life. Thank you, Dr. Crickle. Um, at this time, I'm gonna ask the panel members if they have any questions of counsel. And we'll start with Dr. Lewis, any questions? No, I have no additional questions or anything to ask okay. of either. Um, uh, attorneys. Thank you, uh, Ms. Lubiano. Yes, just just one question for Dr. Crickle and uh, Doc. I, I wanted to to say that uh, I realized that you know it takes courage to to find yourself and, and ask for help, and, and I I recognize that you've done that you know, in. in different areas of your recovery. Um, the question I had for you is that in this period of your sobriety, I, I wanted to hear in your own words how how it's been and how it's different uh, perhaps than previous times of sobriety. Um. My sign in for internet sites, I call myself Dr. Spock, um, equating myself to his personality of, you know, just the facts. What my kids have heard me say, what do emotions have to do with it? Uh, since stopping work, I've become much more in tune with my emotions, my feelings. Um, um, Moving out for my wife is the best thing I've ever done uh, for myself. Uh, since the DUI, I've, they say do 90 meetings in 90 days. I did 90 meetings in less than 45 days. I'm now going to at least a meeting a day, sometimes two. I was involved with multiple programs at Kaiser. Those were halted with the pandemic. I have no urge to drink. Uh, there's no way I'm gonna drink. Um, or be a danger to anybody else. Um, I'm just more in tune with who I am. And at a point in my life with a pending divorce, 
um, and a daughter getting married in less than two months now. Um, looking forward to three to six months from now and being able to redirect my course in life from where I was and look forward to using my talents, my training and experience in some way, whether it's taking care of patients or not. Ms. Lubion, any further questions? Thank you, no further questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Hawkins, any questions? Yes, thank you very much for Dr. Crickle. Dr. Crickle, I wanna uh, let you know I recognize and appreciate you're showing a rehabilitation and remorse for this whole situation. Not everybody does. Uh, I just want to know if you understand why and accept why we would request the clinical competence and even someone with your previous credentials has been out of practice for seven years. Absolutely. No qualms about that. I Thank you. Would Thank you. welcome it. Dr. Hawkins, any further questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Watkins, any questions? Yes, I just have one question. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Dr. Trickle. My only question was that uh, a psychologist, I think you mentioned, uh, prescribed naltroxin to you, and you began taking it about six months after the, after the event in question. I just want to establish whether you're still taking that or as you did you stop taking the naltroxin? I'm still taking it and I think I said before that I didn't think I needed it. Um, I had no urgings, no cravings, especially since moving out from my wife, which <clears throat> made a big, big difference in my relationship with alcohol, especially the last couple months. Um, I don't think I need it, but since she recommended it, I took it. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Yip, any questions? Yes, uh, thank you, doctor, for uh, coming before the board. Um, can you remind me the, which day did you, which year did you take that board exam for family practice? Um, I think it was November, it was 2017, November, yes. And you remain uh, board certified? Yes, I am currently board certified in family you. medicine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, that does conclude. I have a question, just one question. I'm um, sure who's, who's speaking, I'm sorry? Dr. Lewis is here. Okay. Again, thank I'm you. listening to the comments and I just want to echo some of my colleagues' comments that it, is, it takes a lot of courage to come before a panel such as this and let it all out. Your emotions and your traumas and what you're doing to be a better doctor and a better uh, citizen. So I commend you um, for that. Also for taking the family practice boards under such a trying time period for you. So I just want to express my thoughts around that subject. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Um, I'll just ask generally, do any of the panel members have any additional questions? Okay, hearing none, that does conclude the arguments in this matter. The record is closed, the case is submitted, and we can uh, go off the record. Uh, Dr. Lewis, I'll turn the floor back over to you. Okay, thank you, uh, Judge King. The next oral argument is following a remand, and that is for Dr. Darren Bergley. So I'll turn it back over to you, Judge King. Thank you. So. Do I quit now? I'm sorry? Yes, we're off. We're it's done. Time for me to quit and sign off. Yeah, you, you can sign off. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Sure. So before we go in the record, I just want to make sure we have the attorneys and the parties. Um, I have the last name is Bergie. Is there an L in the name? No. I have, 
It's, it is, no. it's, it's Bergy. Okay. It's, it's Bergy. B -E okay. G E Y. All right. So is Dr. Bergy present on the call? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. And um, I have uh, Deputy Attorney General Moorhead listed as as the the DAG representative. Is she here? Ms. Moorhead, are you on the line? Ms. Moorhead, you're on mute. If you could come off mute. Ms. Moorhead, it looks like you're connected by phone as well. There's also a if you had your phone muted, there's also a mute button on your computer that you'll have to unmute. There you go. Okay, can you hear me now? We, yes, can. we can. Thank you. And then, um, attorney for a respondent, I have Henry Fenton. No, Your Honor, this is Nicholas Jerkowitz. Okay. And Mr. Jerkowitz, can you spell your last name? Sure. J U R K O W I T Z. Okay, are you with are you with Mr. Fenton's firm? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, it does look like we have everyone here that we need. Give me one second here. Okay, Anne, if we could please go back on the record. And good morning, everyone. We are on the record before panel A of the Medical Board of California in the matter of the accusation against Darren Lyle Berge. This is Medical Board case number 800-2014-006206. OAH's case number is 2019-04052.1. Today is May 12, 2021. The time is approximately 9.50. This hearing is being conducted by video conference through the WebEx application. This is the date, time, and place set for oral argument in the notice of hearing for oral argument. My name is Tiffany King. I am the administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings who was assigned to preside over this matter. Prior to going on the record, the board members identified themselves and the quorum was established. Um, if I could please have the appearance of counsel for the record, beginning with Ms. Moorhead. Good morning, Deputy Attorney General Claudia Moorhead, appearing on behalf of the complainant, William Prasiska. Good morning, Your Honor. Nicholas Jerkwitz, on behalf of the respondent and present as well is the respondent, Dr. Berge. Okay, thank you. In this case, the Superior Court has remanded this matter back to the board to reconsider the appropriate penalty. The following process and time limitations shall apply. Respondent will begin and have 15 minutes to make an opening argument. The Deputy Attorney General will then have 15 minutes to respond. Respondent will then have five minutes to make a closing argument, followed by the Deputy Attorney General to have five minutes to make her closing argument. These time limits shall be strictly enforced. The argument shall be based only on the existing record and shall not exceed the scope of the record of duly admitted evidence. No new evidence may be heard. The panel members may ask questions of the parties to clarify the arguments, but cannot ask questions that may elicit new evidence. The ALJ and any panel member may ask a party to support their oral argument on a matter with a specific citation to the record. At the end of oral argument by counsel, I will ask if Dr. Berge would like an opportunity to address the panel regarding the penalty. If he does so elect, then I will place him under oath first. After oral argument, the board will go into closed session to deliberate. The parties will not receive a decision today, but will receive it in the mail sometime in the future. And a final reminder that the arguments must be based on the existing record. And also know that the board has already had the benefit of reading your briefs. Are there any questions before we begin? No, Your Honor. Okay. In that case, Mr. Jerkowitz, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, this case involved an accusation against Dr. Berge uh, concerning his care and treatment of five patients uh, over a number of years. 
these were very complicated uh, workers' compensation patients um, who all had very serious injuries. In 2018, there was a 10-day hearing that took place, and after that hearing, the administrative law judge issued a proposed decision, um, which was initially adopted by the board. Uh, the decision placed Dr. Berge on five years probation due to findings related to the five patients. We sought reconsideration, uh, which was granted. And as a result, the board reduced the term of probation from five years to 35 months. Subsequent to that, we filed on behalf of Dr. Berge a writ petition in Superior Court. And after that somewhat lengthy proceeding, the judge granted the writ petition, ruling that the weight of the evidence uh, did not support the findings with respect to three of the five patients. Based upon that, the court ordered that the board's decision uh, be set aside and to be reconsidered in light of the court's ruling. Um, as a result of that, and the reason why we're here today, Dr. Berge requests that in light of those proceedings, the court's the Superior Court's ruling, his full compliance with probation up until now, uh, that he be credited for the approximately 23 months that he has already served on probation, and that the board immediately terminate the remaining uh, portion of his probation. As I said, Dr. Berge has fully complied with all the terms of his probation. He is eligible for early termination of probation, and in light of the fact that he had, in light of the fact that the Superior Court's findings with respect to three of the five patients were overturned after the Superior Court uh, determined that the weight of the evidence did not support the findings with respect to those three patients, um, that the termination is, should be terminated immediately. Uh, during this time, Dr. Berge has completed an ethics course. He has completed a prescribing course. He has completed all of the CMEs that he's been required to undergo under probation, and he has been in full compliance with his probationary terms. And in addition to that, uh, he now only prescribes pain medicines in a post-operative setting. So the public interest will be best served by terminating Dr. Berge's probation early. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Moorhead? <laughs> yes, good morning. Um, the complainant does not oppose the uh, respondent's request to uh, terminate probation early. Um, I'd like to start off by saying that at this point in the proceedings, um, the decision of the Superior Court does not require the board to reconsider its findings. The only uh, issue before um, the board today is to reconsider the penalty in light of the Superior Court decision, what we are um, left with currently based on the Superior Court's decision are uh, two simple departures with respect to two patients. And uh, just briefly, um, the court agreed with the board's finding that respondent departed from the standard of care when he overly prolonged treatment of patient JB with uh, benzodiazepines through November 14, 2014, while JB was concurrently taking opioids, and that uh, respondent failed to address adequately or document addressing JB's use of alcohol. Um, the respondent first treated JB uh, back on January uh, 20, 2012. That's when he began treating him. Treating him. Uh, JB had been involved in a uh, car accident involving two fatalities that resulted in JB suffering significant psychological and physical injuries. Um, he, uh, Dr. Berge had been prescribing uh, benzodiazepines and opioids um, to JB and other medications. Um, and during that time, uh, JB had turned to alcohol to help him sleep and deal with his pain. Uh, he was also, um, he also had a, a driving under the influence um, arrest or conviction. Um, and so the court found that the evidence was, uh, the board's evidence was significantly more persuasive on that case. Dr. Miller testified 
that JB's drug regimen put him at risk, especially with his alcohol use. Um, Dr. Miller testified about the addictive nature of um, and dangerous nature of the combined use of benzodiazepines and opioids. Uh, with respect to the second patient, patient TW, um, the court agreed with the board's finding that respondent departed from the standard of care when on or about April 16, 2013. Uh, he failed to ask the pharmacy to run a cure report on TW when he was unable to do so himself, given that TW um, had asked for a specific number of pills um, that were controlled. Um, and so the court found that Dr. Miller's specific testimony concerning the unusual and suspicious nature of that first visit with TW uh, was credible and that TW came requesting a specific number of pills and respondent um, not only um, didn't request the cures report in response to her behavior, but also prescribed 60 uh, more pills uh, than the patient had requested. And so the the issue is what is the appropriate penalty to impose in light of the superior court's decision, the public interest, the goal of rehabilitating uh, licensees. Um, uh, briefly, a public reprimand would not be appropriate in this case because it's a one patient case. Um, next, the technically the penalty that is currently in place is consistent with the disciplinary guidelines, but um, in this case, the Superior Court did remand um, because it found that much of what the board relied upon uh, in determining the penalty was not supported by the weight of the evidence. So um, it, it, that's what the court stated, despite the fact that it was pointed out to the court that the current penalty was consistent with the disciplinary guidelines. Um, the court also indicated that the departures with respect to JB was serious, but that the departure with respect to TW was minimal. So um, that being said, the respondent, as uh, his counsel has uh, indicated, has been serving 35 months of probation um, with terms and conditions since June 28, 2019. He has been on probation for approximately one year and nine months for a total of 22 months. Um, his probation is scheduled and next year on May 28, 2022. And so um, he, you know, by the time of um, the, any decision on remand, uh, the respondent will have served approximately two years of probation. And as the respondent indicated, um, it is the compliance understanding that he has been in compliance with the terms and conditions of his probation, um, which includes completing a prescribing course, ethics score, course, and it's our understanding that he has completed approximately 82.5 CME hours. He's required to comply with 65 or to do 65 hours for each year of probation. And so he will need to complete an additional 47.5 hours approximately by June 28th of this year. Um, after that, he would need to complete the remaining 65 hours by the end of his probation. So um, the respondent is eligible for early termination of probation based on business and professions code 2307 subdivision B3. And that provision indicates that for anyone who is serving less than three years of probation, they're eligible to apply for early termination of probation after just serving one year. Um, so based on the Superior Court's decision, Business and Profession Code 2307 Subdivision B3, the fact that um, the respondent has been in compliance with the terms and conditions of his probation uh, the complainant does not oppose the request to terminate his probation early. Um, we do request that the decision be effective within 30 days um, after the board's uh, decision. And that um, penalty would be with the public interest as well as we have the goal of rehabilitation of licensees. No further comments. Thank, thank you, Ms. Moorhead. Uh, Mr. Jerkowitz, would you like to make a closing? Yes, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, just just very briefly, because um, 
um, Ms. Moorhead and I are not uh, that far in disagreement of, of what we're recommending to the board. The only two points I'd like to raise uh, is, first of all, with respect to this case, and in the end, um, it being nearly two simple departures with one of them, the Superior Court finding really a minimal departure. Uh, I think it very likely that Dr. Berge, um, had that been the original finding by the administrative law judge and had been adopted by the board, it very likely that Dr. Berge would have uh, been, uh, would have received a, a disciplinary uh, uh, term less than 35 months probation, possibly a public letter of reprimand, but certainly um, a shorter duration of probation. So uh, based upon that, uh, I think that the termination of his probation um, should be immediate. Um, I don't think there's any public interest or, or need to extend it out 30 days from the date of the board's decision. I think the board can um, immediately terminate the probation. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jerkowitz. Uh, Ms. Moorhead, anything further? Um, I, I would uh, disagree. I, we, um, the court should, um, you know, require Dr. Berge to, uh, at minimum, um, complete the, um, as, you know, the remaining or outstanding education courses that are uh, required. And so if, if he were to complete his probation by, you know, June 28th of, of this year, then we would have completed the full uh, 65 hours that are required for each year of probation. So we would still request that the probation be terminated um, within 30 days of the board's decision, which would, you know, be approximately or close to June 28th, 2020. Here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Jerkowitz, would uh, you like Dr. Berge to address the panel? If Dr. Berge would like to address the panel, then that'd be great. Dr. Berge, would you like to address the panel? Uh, yes, in, in light of at least the, the last comments there, I'd be happy to, and I would like to, yes. Okay, Dr. Berge, before you begin, if you could please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly state under penalty of perjury that the evidence you will give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, sir, your, your five minutes begin now. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, the opportunity to uh, present before you today. I uh, in, and I uh, I will offer to the members of the board and to you, Judge. Uh, I have completed the remaining what I believe was uh, 47 point five hours that was required of me on the CME credits uh, and uh, and I can provide that to my probation officer or in a, however you'd like to me to present that. But I have completed those remaining hours. Uh, and so that has been completed and uh, I can update those uh, those details. The. Um, and it's. And I've also had the opportunity. Sorry about that. Hello. Uh, and, I, and I've also had the opportunity to, uh, as stated, complete my educational courses and and have had the opportunity to re uh, focus my practice uh, away from any other pain management procedures of treating pain management patients. And uh, and the only pain management I provide now is in a, a brief post-operative period, and then refer all the remaining uh, care to pain management physicians. Uh, I'd like to thank the members of the board uh, for the opportunity to hear my case today. Thank you, Dr. Berge. I'm going to open it up to the panel members to see if they have any questions or begin with Dr. Lewis. Any questions? Yes, um, Ms. Moorhead, it seems like um, there's a little disconnect is that Dr. Berge tells us that he's completed all his hours, but you haven't received them. Because if, if you have received them, you and Mr. Jerkowitz um, are, are even. Do you understand that, what I'm asking? Uh, um, I, I um, did not have information um, that he had completed the additional 47.5 hours that were required for the second year of probation. So, um, if that is um, the uh, if he has completed those hours, then um, we are uh, in agreement. Okay. So, Mr. Jerkowitz, have you received the hours that Dr. Berge said he has completed to satisfy his probation? 
I, I have not personally received them, but I think that if Mr. Berge, excuse me, as Dr. Berge just said, he, he would be able to provide them if requested. Okay. And then you're together. Yes. Your agreement. Okay. So we'll just wait for that. You see, we're not in agreement, but we will be in agreement. Is that correct? I, I yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lubiano, do you have any questions? No questions from me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Hawkins? Yes, thank you very much uh, for Dr. Berge. Uh, Dr. Berge, uh, thank you for your commitment for providing services to citizens with worker compensation injuries, and these are often very difficult cases. Um, my question is, one, will you continue to provide care to uh, individuals who are in the workers' compensation uh, arena? And two, if you will, are you having difficulty finding uh, pain managers positions to refer your patients to? And thank you for the question. Uh, so my practice has been, it used to be I provided treatment as the primary treating physician for injured workers. Uh, I still continue to treat injured workers, but only as a consulting surgeon. Uh, I have uh, patients of mine that I've operated on through the years and they return with uh, new problems um, that need surgery and uh, pain management doctors are, and some other physicians have, if they refer uh, a patient to me for surgical consideration, I'll perform that consult. Um, I have not had any uh, difficulty uh, with regards to referrals to pain management uh, for either the chronic uh, care of opioid medical management or for uh, procedures. Um, some of the pain management doctors who used to take work comp, uh, some of those have changed, but there are have been others, and so that has not been a, a problem. It's turned into a much smaller percentage of my practice, but I still do uh, provide care for those injured workers on a surgical consult basis. Uh, but any other of the other primary treating care or pain management care, I defer to others. Thank you very much. I have no other questions. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Watkins, do you have any questions? I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Yip? No questions. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to open it generally. Do any panel members have any additional questions at this time? Okay, hearing none, that does conclude the oral arguments in this matter. The record is closed and the case is submitted and we may go off the record and the panel will deliberate in closed session. Um, Dr. Lewis, I'm going to turn it back over to you, but before, before I do, I do need to ask, uh, Ms. Leeds, if you could give me the um, estimated page for both Dr. Krickle, Dr. Crickle and Dr. Berge. Uh, yes, Your Honor. So for um, Dr. Crickle, uh, it was the time was nine to nine fifty, and that was twenty five pages. Okay. For Dr. Berge, I have the time is nine fifty three to ten fourteen, and that's fifteen pages. Fifteen pages. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Lewis, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Judge. And now the panel A will deliberate under closed session. So Dr. Lewis, can I interject? We actually won't be asking people to leave this meeting. We'll be having you guys join the other meeting. So you guys will be leaving this meeting and oh, going to the closed deliberation invite that I sent earlier. So the people that the uh, participants that are not part of the panel will leave their phone lines open. Correct. No, no, the, the, the panelists and judge King, uh, you should have all in received a 2nd invitation yes. along with the 1st. So you can go ahead and leave this meeting. I will keep it open for the public. That's and, what I think. Yeah, please join that other closed session uh, for deliberation invite and I will meet you over there where you can conduct your deliberations. And again, I'll keep this open for the public until we adjourn later this afternoon. Okay, and a uh, message to the public is we don't expect to finish our deliberations till 12 or later. So, and then we will go into a brief open session and then adjourn the meeting. So that's the plan. Okay.
Uh, Sean will join you at the other side. And if anybody wants to break, take a break now, yes. Uh, Hawkins here. Just want to know how long of a break do we have? Just to 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Okay, 15. So it's uh, it'll be 1030. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm in. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Dr. Lewis. Dr. Lewis, you're back on mute. Okay. Uh, we've completed our closed session of panel A, and now I am opening meeting to our open session. Okay. Now we will adjourn panel A, uh, close open session, and return for the next meeting tomorrow. Thank you all very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Adjourn.